America's coffee habit really got started in 1773 when a new tax led colonists to turn against British tea. In America's larger cities, some taverns were turned into sizable coffee houses, and Americans learned how to make good coffee at home. During the Civil War, coffee proved a valuable stimulant and comfort for soldiers. But coffee consumption for the average American was only two pounds a year. With the pace of life getting faster, Americans found coffee helped them keep pace with modern city life. Advertisements for coffee began appearing regularly in the Saturday Evening Post. In 1920, the average American was now annually drinking 12 pounds of coffee. That year, coffee makers formed the Joint Coffee Trade Publicity Committee to encourage Americans to drink even more. The committee's ads promoted coffee's ability to keep people alert and invigorated. The committee also tried to correct misconceptions about coffee's health risks, which were promoted by the maker of a coffee substitute. In the 1930s, the Post carried ads from a new trade association, the Pan American Coffee Producers. They informed readers that coffee improved reasoning judgment and self-control, that it wouldn't keep you awake, it helped you lose weight, and wouldn't give you a hangover. During the Second World War, many Americans came to depend on coffee to help them work through their night shifts in defense plants. And GIs relied on coffee to keep themselves alert and active in combat. By 1946, America's coffee habit reached an all-time high 46 gallons per person per year. But as life returned to normal after the war, Americans drank less coffee, though it remained important in the workplace. As far back as 1902, managers at Barcolo Manufacturing found that coffee breaks made workers more productive. So they instituted mandatory 15-minute breaks for coffee twice a day. Workers appreciated the lift in the workday they got from caffeine, whether at a diner or a coffee stand. But employers realized they were losing productivity with employees going off-site for their brew. By the 1950s, they realized they could save money by providing coffee on-site. It was at this time that the term coffee break gained wide use. It came from ads from the Pan American coffee producers which encouraged readers to give yourself a coffee break. Today, coffee has lost none of its importance in the workplace. If anything, it's consumed in greater quantities than ever. 86% of America's full-time employees drink 15 to 20 cups of coffee per week and spend over $1,100 a year on coffee. But the coffee break has lost its importance since no one stops for a cup they just keep working. It may seem like we're drinking a lot of coffee, but we're consuming only half of what we did in 1946. Why did our average coffee intake drop to 20 gallons a year? The answer is that many Americans discovered drinks that were carbonated, intensely sweet, and even contained caffeine, which is why the average American's annual consumption of soft drinks is 42 gallons. Saturday Evening Post members can explore our 200-year-old archive for only $15 a year. Subscribe today.